Hey guys and welcome back. This video is we are going to be finally finishing this quilt up. I had started this lap quilt and um, I do have it sandwiched and pinned and I have a little bit of quilting done on it. I'm just doing simple straight line quilting, nothing fancy. Um, and as you guys know, I had had like a really bad allergic reaction to something which I do believe was a medication, cream medication. On my hands and they were just peeled and they were raw and they were cracked and they hurt and I just had to let those heal up before messing with fabric so they're pretty much healed and what I'm going to do is just paint you guys down because all we're going to do right now is I'm just going to um, do some just straight line quilting for a little bit and I'm trying to figure out where I was at because I have already sewed on this a little bit. And I ran out of thread. So I um, stopped and like let it rest. Okay, yeah, I'm right here. And I'm just going to slide the batting and everything down. And I'm just going to like fold this bit over. And all I am doing is I'm sewing beside, I'm using my foot for my guide, and I'm just sewing beside these lines all the way down. Um, when I get down to the bottom, I just pull it back up to the top, so just sew back down. Everything is pinned and sandwiched. That is all I'm doing. Um, I will go around the perimeter once I get all of this center sewed. And um, then we'll trim up the batting and the edges, and we're going to put the batting on, or not the batting, the binding on. And I actually need to find my batting fabric, or um, shoot, binding fabric. <laughs> I need to find that fabric. It's here somewhere. So let's, um, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start my foot right here. I'm using the side of my foot as my guide. I'm going to drop my needle and I am going to back stitch just a hair. I gotta find my foot. Pedal down here. You can tell I'm not sewed in a while. And um, put my foot down. And I have it on super slow. So I need to speed it up here. Alright. So I just back stitched a little bit just to tack my threads down. And when I say I'm sewing super slow, you guys see how so slow I can't talk today. And that's all I'm doing is I'm pulling this fabric in the back to make sure it is not like wadded up or um, creased. Actually, I could slow that down just a little bit. Yeah, right about there. I don't want it going too fast, but I don't want it going too slow. And that's all I'm doing, guys. Easy peasy. You can have this quilt done in two days. If you're super efficient, used to quilting, you can have it done in a day. So all I'm doing is grab them back behind. Make sure everything is nice and smooth. And that's all we're doing. So I am going to finish this part up. And when it's time to get the, um, the binding going, I'll bring you guys back. Okay. Welcome back again. What I'm doing right now is cutting out two and a half inch strips. And just super easy. Um... I'm just laying them on my mats. And one, two and a half, one, two and a half. I do have a two and a half inch here. I can double check myself. My blade is a little dull. It needs to be changed. And trying to get a good cut. And I'm just cutting strips. That's all I'm doing right now. Um, when I get a lot of strips cut, we'll put them together 
and then I will measure because I wasn't exactly sure how much I needed. So I always cut out more than I need. And the good thing about them being two and a half inch strips, so I can mix them in with jelly rolls if I have extra. Or I can use it in a string quilt or a scrap quilt. Whatever. So I'm going to just continue to cut strips. We're going to sew those strips together. I just sew them end to end. I don't do the bias, the, the diagonal. You can do it however you want to. Um, I just sew them end to end. And then we're going to get the binding put on. And I'll show you guys um, me sewing the binding on. So we'll be back in a few. So just to show you what I'm doing, I have took my strips. I have sewed them end to end. I know that's hard to see on navy. There we go. End to end. And I'm just ironing this out a little bit. So it is much smoother and ironing those seams open. See that nice big. I need to put some water in my iron. Giving it a quick press. So we're going to press it again. And just really worrying about pressing these seams open. Because we are going to fold it over in half. Oh, there's a place I need to even up. I'll even that up a little bit here in a second. Right there. I have not had lunch today. I've had breakfast. I don't know if there's another little spot. That's where it didn't want to cut good. So, we're going to even these up really quick. And then we're going to fold it in half and press again. Okay. So, I'm just... Probably heard me slice that. I'm just even in that up where it was just a tad. This will be right here. Right, see that little uneven spot? I'm just evening that out. I'm just trimming that off with my two inch ruler because I know it's exactly two and a half inches. Okay, cut that thread put my cutter in. So now I'm going to roll this back down all the way back down. And I know you're getting like a really good view of my ironing and my iron. I know my iron. I know. So now my seam is still to the inside. I'm going to press it in half. Let me get over here where you guys can see. I'm going to fold in half. And first I'm going to Give it like a finger press, and then my iron. And I'm going to do the entire width of this, like that. And I do need an ironing board, because this little mat is good for like pressing your squares. But it is not ideal for doing binding. Once I get my binding uh, ironed, I roll it up into a roll. It just, it's easier for me to um, handle. And maneuver. Especially if you're doing a big quilt, that's a lot of binding. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue with this guys. And next, we're actually going to put the binding on. So be right back. Okay, guys, we're starting with the binding. I actually have like a little box down here. I can get my... My roll to stay in it. I put it down there so it'll stay in there as I unroll it. And I have everything loaded under the machine. Um, my thing is, you guys are kind of where the blanket's going to go, so I'm scared it's going to knock you over. And I'm going to try to hold everything 
get everything. I'm going to go very slowly. Back tack just a little here. And I'm using the side of my foot as my guide. Now, my girl here is want to um, curve a little bit. I need to move. I have a shelf right here. I need to get that out of here. Um, because it is definitely like in my way when I'm sewing something big. So this is the next step, guys. I have trimmed around and made my binding. You guys saw I'm making bindings easy. Just cut however wide you want your strip. Sew them end to end, either straight on or at a diagonal. The diagonal is what most people do because it's less bulk under your needle when it comes to uh, that seam. And I will probably start doing it that way, but I'm learning, so I'm doing it this way until I learn. I'm about to hit a corner, so that's where um, I need to pay attention. Okay. Making sure I'm all wound up still. I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch away from the corner. And we're going to miter that corner. Okay, so let me see. I want to make sure everything is nice and lined up here. And I take a needle, I take a needle and I lay it down kind of at a 45 degree angle on that corner, right? So I know that's where I need to stop is right there. I'm going to lift my needle and I'm going to pull this out. <sighs> If I can remember how to do it, guys, it takes me a while to remember what I'm doing. You're going to, uh, I take my needle and fold it like this. It takes me a minute to remember. All right. Yep. There we go. I got it. I got it. takes me a minute to remember so all right I'm going to put my fabric back under there if I can get you under there and I'm going to sew off the edge just like that I'm still holding my my seam here and I'm going to fold it over I will have to do this close up sometimes so you guys can see better so I have it folded at my angle layman Needle back down. And and I pray to God that was right. <laughs> I think it was. But I will know here in just a minute. If that was right or wrong, we will know.
take my pen, put it back. So that was wrong. So I'm going to have to redo this corner. <laughs> oh. I can't remember. I always forget. And that's the thing about sewing. I'm just going to pop this loose right here where the corner's at. I'm not going to redo uh, do the whole thing. Just where this corner is at. I know it's right, but I'm off a little bit somehow. Okay. like that maybe it was like that <laughs> yes we will figure it out somehow some way all right let's try that i've watched several videos on how to um do the corners and i usually have to watch them again and I didn't watch them again, so that's my fault. That's right. <laughs> as long as you can open up this corner. I folded it in the wrong direction is what it was. I folded it down instead of up. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, we're good. I still have my pins in holding everything together, so I am going to continue around this thing you guys don't want to watch me sewing this for 30 minutes around i don't know you might but i'm not gonna make you so i may speed this up a little bit all right so i am going to bring you guys back when i get to the end all right, guys, we are at the end. I have my binding on. It is done. All I have left to do is snip some rogue threads. And I did do my binding to the back on this one. Um, sometimes I do it to the front. Sometimes I do it to the back. This one I did do to the back because I just really liked this dark blue against this pale, the silvery light blue. And then it has just a really thin little piece on the front. Yeah, she is done. She is done. And I am so happy. I am so happy how this turned out, guys. Super easy pattern. Easy, easy to follow. Um, this, again, was the Whirly Gig Quilt using the Perched Owl fabric. I will leave the link down below. And I do have more in-depth videos on how I did my binding and finishing quilts that um, I did uh, a really kind of closer in look uh, video on one of my other quilts and I can link that one um, down below as well but yep she's done she's finished and I will leave the um, like the finished size cause like I said I did put an extra border around with material that I had in my stash that matched it perfect and I will actually throw up a few pictures here at the end, too, of the material. But um, I will measure this. Actually, give me my... You know what? I got I to gotta take measure. Turn her around. There's that beautiful back. Oh, my goodness gracious. I have a tape measure that a friend sent me right here. So... She's longer than I thought. She's right at about 41 inches across. Okay. And 55 inches in length from the original. 
uh, which I don't have that pattern right in front of me, so I can't tell you what the um, original was. Did I put it back in my notebook and I'll tell you. No, I did not. I did not put it back in my notebook. So it's laying up here somewhere on my desk. So that was the measurements. 55 long and about 40, what I, I say? 40, about 41 wide. So not a, not a bad little throw quilt. All right, guys. So our next video or our next project is going to be either this spring fabric doing, I believe it is the placemats in that fabric because I think that is the, um, get my notebook. That's why I keep this notebook. Carla pack. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Carla pack. Um, for a table runner. Okay. So it's either that one with that material or the really pretty sunflowers and bees doing the placemat set. And I just got another, um, stick those back down in there round of material to do these exact same patterns. So I'm going to be doing these twice. Um, I am going to gift one to a family member. So that's kind of why um, I did what I did. Um, I'm going to gift one to a family member on um, the placemats for sure. And I may gift one of the table runners. I don't know yet. Um, but I do like switching out my table for the seasons. But all right, guys, I will have a few pictures here at the end of some of the details of the fabric and this one's done this one's in the books this one's done it would take an experienced quilter um an efficient quilter one to two days to do this little quilt whereas it took me it took me a while i had I had the top pieced in two days um it was my hands I was waiting on, um, waiting to heal up where I'd had a really bad allergic reaction and I was just waiting on my hands to heal up before I started handling fabric and batting again. So, um, that's what took me a while. I apologize, but they're healed back up now and I know not to do what I was doing. All right, guys, I'm going to show you some pictures. <laughs> 